Eric, we know you took a maintenance day yesterday, but after a couple days of camp, how are you feeling about this group and about yourself? Yeah, good. Uh, we've got a really good group, and, and uh, I think it showed in the scrimmage is three overtime games, so uh, we've got a lot of good players here, a lot of good talent, and, and I feel like the competitiveness uh, from last year to this year is up, and, and that's a good, good sight. You're a veteran who knows you're going to make the team, so how do you approach the preseason slate of games, and what do you want to achieve for yourself? You just want to be ready when October 12th comes around. Uh, the goal is to get in the best shape you possibly can, uh, get the timing right, um, you know, form some connection um, with your line mates, uh, chemistry, um, and um, obviously we don't want to see any bad injuries. So um, obviously just get the reps in, and, and uh, every time you hop on the ice, the goal is to win the game. So, um, yeah, we're looking for a good battle tonight against Philly, and, and um, yeah, it should be fun. Special teams introduced for the first time today for everyone. So even though the you know systems aren't really set, the roster isn't set, what's the approach that you all have tonight with that? Be sharp. Uh, work hard. Um, I think those are two big things. We obviously have some guidelines of uh, how we run things and, and some ideas. And so then it just come, comes, uh, comes to execution, um, competing, um, beating the other team. And, and that's the fun part, obviously. And, and uh, usually there's a big reward at the end. Eric, I know you're one of the better voices on this team. What do you say to guys like Alexander Holtz, guys that are trying to make the roster here? Yeah, I mean, just encourage him. Uh, I think he he looks good and, and looks like he had a great offseason. So I think encouragement is a big thing, and, and he has a great opportunity playing with two two great players. So uh, excited to excited to watch him tonight, and, and I'm sure he's going to do great. What's the difference between like your summer legs and your game legs, and how long do you feel like it takes to get like real game shape? Yeah, well, that's. That's kind of always up to the individual to, to figure out, and, and uh, that's kind of where you juggle along with how many preseason games you're going to play, how many you need, and, and uh, it's, it's always hard to tell until you really get into the game action. And, and uh, for me, like last year, an example, I, I remember going to Madison Square Garden and logging 23 and a half, and I felt pretty good after that. I know it's early, but what's your impressions of Travis Green and his maybe getting to know him as a person, as a coach? Yeah, I feel like the transition's been been swift, and, and uh, he's fit in, fit in great. And and uh, now we get into the game action, so um, so only going to get to know him better. But communication is good, and, and uh, that's what we need. And and uh, and uh, so it's been good. Eric, how much is your level of comfort this year uh, versus last year, knowing you have the, the longer extension? Um. Yeah, comfort's always uh, it's always a word you always try to stay away from. But but I, I feel good. I haven't been in a situation where I get to return to the same team and and uh, you know after last year and, and going into the off season that was the goal. Uh, this is where I wanted to be and and so you know I, I would just say I'm happy, uh, excited and, and fortunate to be with such a good uh, good organization, good group of guys and and uh, and so we're gonna set the ceiling high and and uh, go from there. How does Pilat look? I mean, it seems like he's got his legs back after dealing with that groin injury and having to pull somewhere to heal. Yeah, he looks he looks really good. Uh, excited that I get to play with him, and and, uh, and we all know that he's a good player. And, and it's hard always uh, looking back, knowing what what guys are dealing with. Uh, you know, you're never going to really get the true answer. We're all competitors, and we all want to be out there. So, uh, but but I think he looks phenomenal uh, after the summer. It looks uh, refreshed, I, I think, and and so. Um, it's, it's, it's exciting for a group, too, to have, have a guy like that feel, feel, feel good. Eric, you played on the wing at that center last year. Do you anticipate playing more center this year? I don't anticipate anything except for some juggling with the lines. <laughs> That's kind of how we know Lindy. And, and uh, you know, just, just talking around, it's like we got great options. No matter where I play, I'm going to play with really good players. And, and uh, you know, whatever gives us the best chance to win, I'll play, play wherever. Tice, we haven't talked to you yet, so how was your off-season training? Where do you think you've made the biggest jumps in that program? Yeah, I think uh, my off-season was great. You know, I was out in Arizona, um, and I felt like I got a lot stronger, uh, faster, and I think, uh, you know, coming into this year, like, my role that I needed to be to be on the team is uh, a lot to do with that. And what is that role? I think bringing a lot of energy, uh, playing with pace, being physical, hard to play against, and uh, just being, like, really reliable. And with this train camp so far, how have you seen this group really elevate from the first couple of days to keep making making it more intense every day? Yeah, I mean, it's it's very competitive. Obviously, everyone's trying to make the team. Uh, I think everyone's pushing each other from within. Uh, it's a you know a good culture that there is going on here, and I think uh, it's just going to make everyone better and the team better. You look at the fourth line, there's a lot of depth 
now and there. What, do, what can you do to stand out, maybe make an impression on the coaching staff that you can earn that spot? Yeah, it's, one of those spots. yeah. No, I think uh, you know, just showing that I can also have a little bit of offensive touch out there too. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, still play that fourth line role, um, but also you get the opportunity to make plays. You know, do that. With your contract, obviously the waiver exempt status is, is kind of going away. Is that, is that a little bit of a more of an extra motivation for you, uh, knowing you know that you have to uh, pass through waivers? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't really think about that too much. I just try to you know come to the rank and do my job and let the rest take care of itself. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I don't really think about that too much or try not to at least. With the split squad, it's obviously an opportunity for more playing time, but also with special teams. So I know it was introduced today. What are kind of the main focuses that you all have since this isn't necessarily the same units that will be used the rest of the preseason? Yeah, I think that it's split squad creates a lot of opportunity for guys, whether it's on the power play or penalty kill or, you know, up and down the lineup. So, um, you know, everyone, most everyone's playing. So, uh, you know, just take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, and uh, that's it. You know, unlike uh, of that who maybe is building through the preseason, knowing that you need to play so well in the preseason to make a team, does that change the way you train in the summer at all or how prepared you are when you show up at the start of the training camp? I mean, every summer I feel like, you know, I, tr I train the same way. I train to get better, to get stronger. Um, but, yeah, I, kn I knew this summer was bigger than, you know, years past. You know, I, I have to, this year I have to really show that I can play here and be here. You know, uh, the way that your brother took – massive jumps after say like five six years in the league and and it showed that guys might not be finished products after three four years do you take anything from that knowing that like there is still a ton of room that you can grow even you know you get five six years into your career yeah no definitely i think he's a great example of you know everyone has a different time period a different path and um you know i just try to worry about myself and and what i can do to get better every day and you know uh hopefully it's now but you know just keep getting better every day you mentioned arizona who did you train with uh, mostly my brother um, and a few other guys just working out, but the skates were, got pretty big there. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of other NHL guys and the Coyotes are all out there, so uh, it was a good group. Kind of walk us through, you know, inside, take us inside the room a little bit. How, how do you and your brother kind of push each other in the summer? Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's always um, trying to get better, and uh, I just I, I think more he probably pushes me more, uh, just the simple fact that I'm trying to keep up with him, you know. Uh, trying to, you know, score in competitions in practice or, or uh, in the gym, trying to do more weight than him. So uh, I think it helps that he's older than I am, and, you know, I have to try to keep up with him. So I think it's definitely beneficial for me. When you come to this camp, there's obviously a lot of competition going on right now. What do you want to show to everyone to set yourself apart? Uh, just play my game. Um, I don't want to step outside, um, you know, what my strong points are. I want to play good defensively and make sure I lock down that part of the ice and, and uh, play good on the kill, uh, make sure I don't get any easy looks on the penalty kill, block shots, and overall just play hard. And if I get a chance to add to the offense, and, and add to the offense. Speaking of special teams, it was just introduced to this group today. What are some of the main things that you focus on to try to achieve since nothing's really set in stone yet? Yeah, it's it's just the beginning. But um, for, for me, for, for the penalty kill group, it's it's compete. It's, it's uh, you know, good sticks, block shots, and, and, and overall just outwork their power play. So if we can do that, then we should have a lot of success. You've been playing with Brendan Smith a lot so far here in camp, and I know he's somebody who's really vocal, likes to you know give his advice on what he's seeing. What's that pairing been like for you so far? It's been great. Um, he's been around for a long time. Uh, he's a veteran in this league. He's played a lot of a lot of games this league. So it's nice to learn off a guy like that, and it's nice to have him be vocal and, and very you know um, helpful and, and uh, it's, it's been nice to be paired up with him. What's it been like playing in the uh, on the same organization as your brother? It's cool. Um, we were lucky enough to do it in juniors, and then uh, a little taste of it in Tampa for a camp. But um, it's 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 been pretty cool. It, it's helped me out a lot. Um, coming in, not really knowing anyone, he's he's helped with that aspect. And then um, you know, it's just nice for our family to to be together. What was the, the the phone call, the text message like when you know the deal was was officially you know made official? Uh, with, with your brother. With my brother. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, he was, we lived together in the summer, so um, it was, there was some talk of it, so he kind of knew it was coming, and then um, obviously when, and he was the first one I told, so uh, he was obviously really excited, just as excited as me, so um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you mentioned your defensive style. Um, obviously, this organization, Lindy, talks a lot about getting the fourth man in. So has that been at all an adjustment to kind of the way you've played at all? Like, are you being asked to be a little more aggressive offensively than maybe you have been in the past? 
balance? Not really. Um, I think that's kind of how my past teams have played too. Um, I think it's kind of you know more and more how the game's changing is you need to have your defenseman up in the play. So um, I'm comfortable with that, and it's uh, usually where I, I strike is off the rush or, or um, point shots. So it's uh, very comfortable for me. Where have you seen your brother grow the most with his game? Um, I mean, he's he can shoot it. Um, he, he just always finds a way to put the puck in the net, and um, he's always had that for going for him. So for me, I, I think his his defensive game and and uh, kind of he's, he's playing harder and he's finishing guys more and, and being more physical. So I like seeing that, and um, at the end of the day, he can he can still put the puck in the net. So I, I want to see that for him too. Is that something you push with him, the defensive side? Do you give him extra pointers on that? Um, not really. I mean, because we're different positions, but. Um, you know, he does ask questions and, and uh, he's, he, he wants to learn, so he's, uh, he's very into it. So I kind of help when I can. So Some of the coaches in, in you know, management have talked about how much your brother's game has evolved, how much it's changed. Does, does he look almost like a, like a different player than, you know, say, juniors or, or whatever? Yeah, I mean, the last training camp I was with him was three years ago, and seeing him then to now is, is crazy for me. Uh, he was kind of a kid now, or sorry, kid then, and, and now he's turning into a man, so. Um, he's, he's a big body, and I, I like to see him on the four check playing hard. And it's uh, he definitely looks a lot different for me, and he looks for sure like an NHL player. Are you living with him? Um, in the summertime, we live together, and then we're at the hotel right now, so we're not in the same room, but close by. Yeah. Tampa obviously is a team that knows how to win championships, and that's something the Devils are trying to have with the culture in the locker room here. What have you seen from the first couple of weeks here in, in New Jersey? I've seen. Very similar things. I've seen a determined group. Um, I mean, everyone here wants to win. You can you can just feel it. You can just tell. Uh, so it's been pretty neat to jump right in here and, and be, be in a group. With, it's a younger core, but it's a team that's pushing to win, and it's very fun to be a part of. What are some of the things that you want to do for yourself to make an impression on the coaching staff? Um, I think, again, just like the first question, just not really go outside of my comfort zone. Um, play my style of game. I don't want to... Do something I'm not, you know, necessarily strong at, and, and turn the puck over or do anything like that. But just play strong in my own end, defend well, good stick, and and um, probably most importantly keep the puck in my net and break the puck out for the forwards and let them do their work. Andy, how do you approach these sort of games where you can't really set necessarily systems, lines to be permanent? How do you tell the players what to focus on? Focus on playing the game the right way. Uh, work on the stuff that we've been working on the, you know, the first four days of camp and through the scrimmages. Uh, if you look at the way our scrimmages have gone and how competitive they've been, you know, I expect the same type of, you know, preseason games tonight. And I thought, you know, last year was a great example of uh, doing the right thing in the preseason and work on, on parts of your game. And there's parts of the game you want to work on. So, um, you know, you you put lines together. Uh, you've got to try to stay connected with those lines and, and play as a five-man group. You worked on the power play for the first time today. What was it that you wanted to see on the first day working special teams? Well, I went through breakouts on one side of the ice, uh, so we worked on that. Uh, you know, a couple of new players are going to get opportunities, obviously, in, in, in both groups that are playing. Uh, we're going to look at some players on the power play, uh, some of the younger guys, uh, you know, some of the new guys uh, in positions where we think they'll fit, fit in. How do you set up your coaching staff for the two games? We've got uh, Travis and Sergey and uh, Kevin Deneen going up to Montreal. Um, we'll have uh, Ryan McGill, Chris Taylor, and uh, and one of the American League coaches will be on the bench here, and, and I'm going to uh, sit up top with Tom and watch the game. Are you going to watch the Montreal game on the monitor or just watch one game and then watch the other no, one? No, I think we'll hopefully have access to both, but I, uh, you know, communicate with the coaches in between periods, come on down, and... Uh, but uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to see a game from up top. Is there, is there a plan in place, Lindy, as far as cutdowns go, when you might want to cut down the roster after a certain amount of preseason games and what you see? Or does that just come naturally? Well, I think uh, after this game, there may be a couple. You know, it, it may be time for, for juniors to go back. Uh, that's a decision we'll make today. Um, you know, American League training camp opens up uh, the end of this week or through the weekend. So, you know, by the weekend, we'll probably be trimming down the roster.
for some reason, special teams are on my mind. So is there a general, general Travis Green philosophy, or is it just every coach has the same, which is let's score more goals? And let... no, I, you know, I think that each guy has his own thoughts on, you know, on how to better a power play and, and areas that uh, feel we can be a little more effective. And I think it's just a bunch of small, small things. Um, getting people inside a little bit more, generating more shots inside of a power play where we score more of those inside goals from the hash marks down. A um, couple new breakouts, which I think that, you know, can can be effective. We've basically been a, a team that's, you know, dropped it to a couple guys coming late. Um, so we're working on a couple breakouts that uh, he has used in the past and, you know, a lot of teams will use. So, um you know, I think some of it is maturity with our guys. You know, we're going from from a year where it was good. We'd, we'd like to just keep improving. Yeah, as you're figuring out how to divide the guys' say, was, was special teams and the special teams groupings you wanted one of the uh, biggest biggest factors? Well, you know, I mean, first we wanted to uh, balance the veteran players. Uh, so amongst that, you know, you, you're looking at a power play unit of probably veteran players to a power play unit of uh, – more younger players or, you know, depth players for us. So that's kind of how we looked at it. We look at our goaltenders. Uh, each are going to play a couple periods. And, uh, you know, I think with, with playing two games in the same day, you get a lot of players get an opportunity to play that maybe wouldn't get an opportunity to play. Will all goaltenders in both groups get some time time? Yeah, b- both games, uh, Akira is going to play two periods. Um, Vitex is going to play two periods. And the other goalies will play one. Is this a wait and see on the goaltenders, Lindy, in terms of who might be, be the starter game one, regular season? Are you using these preseason games to see I, that? I, I'm going to just say that I think we're going to be a team that needs two goaltenders. And it isn't about who the starter is in game one. It's about two goaltenders winning us hockey games. Um, it's not about if you start game one, you're the starter or you're the... I think uh, if you look at the load that you face inside of a season... Uh, and how it unfolded last year, you, you need two goaltenders to win your hockey games. And I think that's the way we have to treat that. How satisfied are you with the amount of goaltender depth you got this offseason? A uh, guy like Sean Brady, Kincaid, a guy like that. I think we've created you know, a position where if you know, we get somebody hurt, we, get, we have somebody that can step in. Uh, we use this training camp to obviously evaluate where we are with all our guys. Status of the Kira Schmidt's waiver exemption does that factor into these decisions at all? For who? A Kira Schmidt needing waivers? Yeah, like does that factor into the decision as to whether he'll be on the roster? Or not? I don't believe he needs waivers. No. Right, right, he doesn't. You yeah, the, the fact that he doesn't need waivers does that factor into whether he'll be up or down? No, the fact we want the best goalies playing goal for us.